bots about. Actually, I'm gonna have to tap out a moment. Looks like I didn't uh, start the recording. I'm sorry about that. There we are. And it seems like we have a pretty standard build at this point. Uh, although Tex is foregoing the uh, usual first uh, Chaos Space Marine in favor of a uh, early Heretic squad. Meanwhile, the Dark Rico is getting the good old Space Marines right away. And it's a very interesting uh, skin that uh, Rico is going on here. Looks like uh, uh, Iron. I don't think it's Iron Fists. Themed, uh, well, actually, it's uh, it's the oh, what's that face? It's a new deal DLC with uh, uh, black Templars like uh, color coloring, I believe. Always been interesting in how interested in how you can uh, do recolors of the DLC skins. And yeah, I know at this point someone is gonna be wanting to throttle me for getting the chapter name wrong. I am so sorry. For some reason, while I'm casting, I'm just not remembering names right. Looks pretty damn slick though, I gotta say. Very much like in this uh, particular look here on Dark Rico. But it looks like we're gonna be having our first engagement here. The Plague Champion against these uh, <laughs> scouts here. That's not gonna be much of a contest once the Plague Marine actually starts firing, of course. But at the moment he's tired and just cabbing along nicely. Look like uh, Tex does have his uh, Chaos Marines out. And Dark Rico is also opted to go for the uh, double scouts in this particular matchup. You have the first worship here, which is of course going to be increasing the survivability of these uh, Chaos Marines pretty nicely. Looks like they're going to be trying to perhaps get in melee with these uh, tactical Marines who are... The Chaos variety does a fair bit more damage in melee than their uh, tactical counterparts, which is going to give them an ed the edge, especially with both a Heretic and of course a Nurgle worship going on. Chaos, uh, these Chaos Space Marines in particular are very tough under a uh, Plague Champion Commander as long as you have Worship uh, going on, you pretty much outshoot anyone. Now this uh, Force Commander is going to be surrounded by Heretics on all sides, but of course he's going to be using Battlecry and start knocking these guys around. Uh, looks like Tex is going to be using Worship to minimize the damage he can cause though, pretty much ensuring that every time he swings he's only going to be hitting one Heretic, and at times none it seems. These Heretics aren't even moving and he's still only hitting one. Looks like it's expired at this point, and he's gonna get right out of there before he gets surrounded again. A wise decision. And this Plague Champion is gonna be trying to hunt these uh, scouts here, but of course the uh, the Plague Champion isn't the fastest of commanders, although I'm not sure if he's actually slow without his uh, particular armor that uh, lowers his movement speed, but he's not gonna be able to catch those scouts anytime soon. Meanwhile, the scouts are gonna be uh, forcing melee on this uh, Havoc squad, and uh, well, that's just gonna be a bit of a tragedy to watch. Not particularly competent me melee units, either of them. Your forces it does, however, look like the Havocs are actually much, much better in melee than the Scouts. They take an awful lot of damage, and uh, Tex did not go for an uh, explosion there. I think that was a bit of a mistake. There's a decent chance he would actually have uh, killed this here Scout Marine squad if he had gotten off uh, one of the uh, cultists exploding. Fancy World is intentional, though. It's, uh, it's sometimes hard to tell. Especially with players against these at uh, this level, there's a lot of things that aren't uh, mistakes. Of course mistakes happen, but a lot of the decisions can sometimes be uh, difficult to understand at first glance. We have quite the range firefight here. These uh, Chaos Marines do not have any heretic support though, and with course with, of course with the Force Commander coming in, they're gonna be in uh, trouble. Not to mention there's both uh, these Sniper Scouts here as well as uh, the Chaos Marines being in uh, cover. And it looks like this uh, this round is going to go to the Space Marine. Havocs are in position to intercept any uh, Space Marine units who uh, end up uh, going for the middle. Although the Scouts might be able to uh, sneak in and uh, get off a shot before these uh, Havocs can get in position. It's not enough to get a kill off though, but it's going to be very, very close. Two shots will definitely be uh, doing it. Some heretics are yelling about being shot and I'm not quite sure what that was all about. And we have a third heretic squad coming out. This is... This is starting to get rather unusual for uh, for Chaos. The question is if he's got any particular plans for that, or he's uh, just hoping for uh, hoping to overwhelm uh, Dark Creek at this point. He pretty much only has the uh, boulder as well as, of course, the command to uh, control these guys. There's the worship again, and of course the havoc, which is gonna be suppressing pretty much the instant it opens fire. And uh, yeah, the havoc is uh, very particular in that case. Meanwhile, we have some melee going on here. We have these. 
heretics who are also bashing power. And this uh, squad here is actually going to be in a bit of trouble. We have the heretics chasing these scouts who are going to be getting into position very soon. But these guys are just going to be... Uh, no, it looks like these heretics did not follow, which is perhaps a mistake. Though these heretics can, of course, uh, do their power bash very well, even without... Uh, even while under fire, they are probably only going to be able to get down this building and should be getting out of there before they take too heavy losses. Dark Riku does have a, a decent adma advantage at the moment in a victory point, but it looks like at the moment he's being pushed back for now. Pretty much only having his uh, Devastator squad here in the field and the Havocs are setting up first which is going to give them a big advantage in the firefight Not to mention they are in better cover and of course they suppress right away compared to the uh, Compared to these Devastators open fire again. It's going to be a bit of a stop and go There's the Devastators firing they finally managed to get off as oppression, but uh, Yeah at this point uh, The Havocs are definitely in the winning position although now we do have the flanking both from the uh, both from the Space Marine, from the Commander, as well as these uh, Flamer attacks. And they're gonna be uh, definitely gonna turn this around. Now the, uh, with the Force Commander in there, these, uh, these Havocs are actually gonna be hurting a lot. They are getting out safely, but they do did take a decent amount of losses. Meanwhile, Tex has decided to go for the Plague Sword with uh, the Champion, which is a pretty damn good choice against the... Oh dear, well it's not a good choice if he goes down, but uh, normally it's a very, ni very nice uh, weapon against uh, against Space Marine. It is uh, of course uh, power power damage, so it's going to be doing uh, more damage against the uh, tactical marines. And uh, due to the nature of Space Marines, uh, a single zombie is going to be a bit, bit more valuable than for example killing off a single former gun. Getting uh, for example a, som a zombie assault marine, he's actually going to be able to do a decent amount of damage. And, uh, I'm actually wondering if, if you do, if you end up zombifying a tactical squad like this, for example, is it going to have the flamer or is it just going to be a regular one? I don't think that they have upgrades, but uh, oh, looks like these are... Uh, that's kind of weird, really. They can just run through this uh, cover. I don't really recall that being the case before. Maybe it's uh, something that was recently introduced. Maybe it's always been there. I don't know. Just uh, stumble across it just now. But yeah, Riku's uh, maintaining some uh, very nice map control at this point, despite... Uh, being outnumbered in the uh, squad, this uh, triple heretic build hasn't really. Well, it's certainly, it's certainly not a uh, hurt text, but uh, with uh, most of uh, Dark Riku's capping forces being uh, scouts, they can easily easily outrun these melee heretics without taking any uh, damage worth noting. Now I do still have this. Uh, now we have fully decked scout squad with both snipers and uh, the grenades, which is going to be pretty decent. That. Uh, Oh, looks like Tex has uh, taken some action with these uh, heretics. They now have uh, we now have two grenade uh, heretics out, and he's also building a shrine to Nurgle here. Looks like he's gonna be uh, making a heavily fortified position here. It's gonna be, uh, I believe, when he's uh, worshiping this uh, hero uh, Nurgle shrine, it's gonna periodically reinforce any units around them that have taken losses. We can uh, check that with the havocs in a moment. Meanwhile, these. Uh, these grenade heretics are a bit of a here. They don't manage to get any losses, unfortunately. The force commander just gonna get right on in there. And no, it looks like it looks like this uh, shrine isn't reinforcing at all at the moment. I did think that uh, when it was worshipped, it would actually work as a reinforcement point at uh, periodic intervals. But it looks like it's just uh, doing a decent job at healing. You don't really see Nurgle shrines all that often. Pretty much the only shrine that gets used is. Uh, corner not even that much. I'm not even sure what uh, the scene shrines are like these days. It did get buffed pretty deeply in the last patch. Um, and it looks like Tex actually believes that Dark Reaper is in tier 3, which is really isn't the case. Far from it, in fact. It uh, looks like he's getting a librarian now, which is going to be very dangerous against these uh, both the heretics and the tackler squads. Mind is, of course, a fantastic ability. Looks like he doesn't manage to get any squad kills at this point, which is, uh, of course, a bit of a shame. Tex is uh, kind of struggling at the moment. He does uh, he does control two victory points, but otherwise his map control is uh, the map control is pretty much in favor of uh, Riku, and uh, Tex also is behind in regards to uh, power income at the moment, having only uh, his uh, natural power point, which has also lost his uh, founder, so he's not going to be getting uh, any more of that anytime soon. 
It does look like, however, he's going for the melee option with his uh, corner, with his uh, care spacemen, who are now devotees of corn. Always fun to watch. It uh, gives them a quite a bit of more movement speed, and of course, wearing heavy armor, they can uh, charge in and do a decent amount of damage pretty easily. And looks like we have a major push here in the middle. Uh, these uh, this here uh, Havoc squad is going to be able to hold the line pretty okay with uh, Corn trying to supporting them. But with the snipers taking out the gunner, then it's gonna, then the Havoc squad is going to be in trouble. Looks like they were pretty fortunate that the. Uh, Force commander, with our special attack, but there it goes down the. Uh, hmm, that's actually kind of peculiar. Looks like the Devastator Squad became a tactical marine zombie, which pretty much makes sense as they do look like uh, as uh, the Devastators one carrying the bowler gun uh, actually look like uh, tactical marines, although they are much, much, much more vulnerable. Pretty interesting that actually. It would be kind of crazy if uh, it would be spawning a heavy boulder rain. Suddenly you'd have the impression where there was none, but. Uh, yeah, well, I always like the idea of this uh, plague uh, sword weapon. You just don't see it often, and uh, honestly, whenever it's used, it doesn't really uh, use the mark. Looks like the Nurgle did it, uh, its thing. Whenever it pulses, it actually does a bit of suppression. Those guys are gonna have to get out of there. There's just this huge grenade by right against this poor force commander, and none of them are actually hitting him. At this point, the uh, Rico has uh, pretty decisively taken map control. Oh dear, what on earth happened? Oh, we have the plasma cannons. Looks like they did an awful lot of damage to these. Oh, looks, yeah, looks like uh, Rico was uh, quick on the draw then actually managed to snipe off uh, the heritage squad. Normally snipers pretty much do zero damage against uh, against retreating units, but th at that point that was just enough to take them out. Ooh, that was one very, very much skipped uh, corner marine right there though. Like we have a uh, new discharge which heals these guys a bit. It is pretty much only their uh, one member that's uh, been lost. Though. Unless this Nurgle Shrine actually starts uh, reinforcing. So, which I'm uh, again, I'm not sure it actually does that. It's not really going to be able to do anything. Meanwhile, LeBron is now using the uh, Veil of Time ability to get off a very, very quick shot, and there goes the Shrine. We hardly knew ye. Yeah, and this Havoc squad is just in trouble. It's getting out of range, but it's, uh, it's getting sniped. It's getting uh, shot by a Devastator real soon again. They're going to be getting out of there, and it looks like it's going to be hitting. It does reduce damage, however. And here comes the Plague Champion. With the Mucus Discharge, he's going to be able to survive a decent amount of extra damage, and he's going to be chopping down uh, scouts left and right, although now he's engaged with the Librarian. Doing pretty decent damage, but of course the Librarian can just use Quickening and uh, get on out of there. Meanwhile, Riku is very persistent about his power bat, and he is just not letting this power farm stay up. Constantly getting his uh, tactical marines up and uh, putting down the whole thing. Well, Tex has uh, managed to regain uh, control of the victory points, but he's still pretty hard. And he's managed to push up a fair bit, actually, in regards to map control, it looks like. Still, uh, power-wise, he is far, far behind, and Riku is going to be very comfortably in tier 2 at this point. Looks like we have these uh, blood letters. I figured they were actually teleporting, but looks like they either cancelled that or something bugged out. I'm not quite sure. This force commander is in trouble, though. Those uh, cornered marines were actually moving as fast as they should. They could probably have taken it up, but for now he manages to get away, no problem. Your forces obey you. There's definitely going to be trouble. Uh, space marines tend to be very, very powerful in tier 3, both their uh, call-ins and, uh, well, both the land raider. Well, the Land Raider is a very powerful unit, although I wouldn't be using them this time. But, of course, the Force Commander in uh, Terminator armor has had a bit of a comeback after being considered uh, pretty damn useless for uh, for the longest time. It does, have a he t it does make him very, very hard to kill, even though he loses his uh, Commander armor status. 2,500 hit point this point is a lot to burn off, especially when it's not actually going to be causing any attrition as long as he doesn't go down entirely. These bloodletters are going to be able to do decently against uh, both these and any real terminators that show up though. And yeah, it looks like these uh, these scouts are going to have to start running real, real soon. Bit of a standoff here at the moment. The Havocs are doing a pretty decent job at uh, suppressing, but uh, at this point, Rico does have a fair few options to counter any entrenchment. 
Looks like we had a bit of a bug shot there. That's uh, got to be really annoying for Riku. He's going to fire off another one though, and there it goes. Once he sees that shrine, he's probably going to try and blow it up, but that's not going to be happening now. Since we do have blood letters up your grill, they are, well, they are just terrible, terrible damage. Yes, that's overused, I know. I'm going to use it anyway. And it sounds, according to uh, Mr. Evil Chaos announcer guy, looks like Tex is now getting his armor upgrade out. It's gonna be the armor of pestilence, which I believe is the one that uh, increases his hit point considerably, but also decreases his uh, damage. Time. There it goes down another heretic squad. He Tex is now down to one uh, heretic, and of course his uh, starting marines at this uh, at this point. Yeah, it looks like he has the armor of pestilence, which greatly increases his uh, hit points, makes him immune to. Uh, Certain, um, certain forms of knockback, but it does however lower his speed somewhat, which uh, makes it a bit questionable at this point, I think. He's already having trouble getting to melee range uh, in, a co in battles, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, reducing his speed even further is going to be uh, the right decision. We'll have to see how it uh, works out for Tex, so he's getting another heretic squad at this point though. Probably needs to needs them to uh, be doing a decent amount with their damage. Grenades are dodged nicely, and these uh, corners are just gonna try and go to town on this scout squad. Although, yeah, with that uh, that scout that scout leader unexpectedly adds a decent amount of survivability, and we do manage to get off without any little uh, losses. We do have a touch of a uh, Nurgle on these uh, corner marines, which is uh, rather unusual. And weirdly enough, then it doesn't look like that last one was actually exploding. Then all the force commanders immune to it. Boom. Gets him filled up nicely. He's gonna have to run right on out there. Tex really can't afford to use lose a uh, action import unit like that. And there's the call, and we're probably gonna see assault terminators at this point. Yeah, there they are. They're just gonna beat down these heretics and these havocs, and Tex is gonna have a hell of a time with these uh, with these fellas. The question is if uh, he's gonna be going with claws. If he does do that, then I think these bloodletters are gonna have a really really hard time fighting the. Uh, Terminators, although even at this point uns unsupported bloodletters are not going to be able to uh, fight off these assault terminators with hammers. They have way too much hit points and uh, bloodletters are for all intents and purposes relatively squishy. Of course on the warship that's a different story but uh, Nurgle warship isn't all that great for uh, demons unfortunately as it uh, the only effect it has is uh, healing uh, is healing marines and uh, heretics and unfortunately it doesn't heal any more than uh, the other warships do. Meanwhile, uh, both corn and zines also add another effect, such as uh, increased movement speed or, invis or uh, invisibility, well, stealth, whatever you call it. Have a bit of a, a, bit of a fight around here. He's, uh, yeah, that just got. And looks like we have the uh, Gate of Infinity, I believe it's called. Uh, um, Dark Reed was really decked out this year. Oh, and he goes down. Looks like he was hoping, uh, Tex was hoping that uh, the explosion would be killing off this force commander who is going to be running right on out of there. Tex is uh, very quick in following, uh, at anticipating where the force commander would be teleporting, but it's not enough. These, uh, for the, the intents and purposes of the blood letters, the teleport is rather slow. They are not going to be able to catch up. They are going to be able to uh, catch this uh, librarian, though, which might. It, I don't think it's gonna take him down, but it is gonna hurt him. They are very effective uh, retreat kills, I find. Do have another touch of Nurgle up on these uh, corners, and there's the explosions. They're gonna have to start running, though. It does look like he's actually gonna stand and fight, though, since these uh, bloodletters are the ones taking the brunt of the damage. And yeah, as you can see, they are do the bloodletters are doing decent damage, but since they're heavy melee and not power melee, they're not doing the bonus damage that. Uh, a squad of, uh, say, Banshees would be doing. And there goes the Bloodletters. I believe Texas is in a lot of trouble at the moment. These, uh... Yeah, these, ass these Assault Terminators are just... terrible to fight at the moment. Pretty much his only uh, hard counter at the moment is, uh... Well, his Plague Champion can stand and fight uh, them for a while. And, of course, his uh, Corner Marines are gonna be doing decently. But there's a lot of uh, units around to, uh, give them trouble such as both the Plasma Devastators as well as these uh, snipers who can uh, pick off models pretty easily. question is, uh, I do wonder if the uh, if uh, this uh, sword can actually make uh, zombie terminators. That would be interesting. 
we perhaps see that in a moment they can yeah looks like we have zombie terminators coming out that's uh, pretty fun Question is if he's yeah it looks like he's using the teleport and he's uh oh it looks like we have the gate of time again in infinity again a cloud here to try and counter these uh, scouts but they're going to be able to kite it pretty easily i don't think it's going to be doing all that much damage Yeah, those, um, those Terminators would pretty much just send all the way in back to the base. It's going to be a while before they recover, but at that point, uh, yeah, it's pretty much going to be GG. And uh, Tex calls it right there. GG to both players, and well done. Well done indeed.